Yeah, all right. Getting this thing kicked off right. I, I love it. Yeah, welcome to Bootsy Greencast. I'm joined with Katie Bowles today. She is a practitioner of a lot of different, uh, really, methodologies. And you have, like, a pretty interesting, uh, I would say, like, mixture sort of between, like, Vedic or uh, was that sort of Hindu uh, stuff, as well as modern uh, astrology, uh, palm reading, tarot, sort of the more you know, uh, contemporary, I would say, um, you know, uh, occult sort of tools or practices. Um, and we recently shot some videos together uh, that I thought were really, really fun and where we went in and sort of demonstrated uh, some of these tools and practices. And uh, I'm still learning about all this stuff. I think October is a great time. It's a very witchy time. Perfect. It's a very, you know, like Halloween's coming up and the leaves are turning and it, it's, you know, the wind is whipping yeah. outside. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. And I, I was really, really fortunate to get to know you. A friend of, a mutual friend of ours uh, put us together and, and shot the video. And I think it's going to be great. I'm really excited about it. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie Bowles. Katie, thank you for coming on and talking to me. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun getting to know you so far and having these kind of discussions. I've never been on video before this. Normally, it's just talking to people at, you know, which things or the stores or, you know, when I have clients come for readings or when I go see other readers for my own guidance, you know, there's kind of like a little bit of fear and talking about these things in normal conversation, even though it's getting more common. But when you find people who are into spiritual things, it's really great to be able to have a discourse and, you know, learn things from them and get ideas from them because otherwise, we're confronted with this abundance of choice of like, what do I, you know, what is my belief system? Do I want one ready made or I, well, I'm going to make my own. Yeah, that's really cool. I do think we get to choose our own. Um, and that's kind of the fun of, of life. And that's what's neat about all these different tools and ways that we can, you know, look into things and places we can ask questions and learn more about the world and then put together that belief system. Um, <clears throat> however, however we'd like to, uh, I think it's important to sort of, if we can, uh, from like Robert Anton Wilson's, one of my favorite like philosophers, mm -hmm. he talked a lot about maybe logic, meaning that he didn't really believe anything but you know he said he had a suspicions but the idea was that he could keep multiple different um you know sort of belief systems available to him he didn't necessarily right. have to collapse on one yeah and i don't think one has to necessarily offend the other like i can go do a celtic style ceremony or you know be um you know an eclectic pagan and do things you know with people, and then I can also go and um, read Artis, you know, sing Artis with my friends over at the Mandir, or you know, whatever I want, and it doesn't offend my other spiritual inclinations because it doesn't have to. Yeah, I you love know? that. I'm not yeah. doing anything that principles or violate being a good person. What that is to me, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that was that that really shown forth a lot uh, when we were talking because we talked about palm reading, astrology. Um, we talked a little bit about sort of like getting to know yourself and um, we also did uh, like a tarot reading. And one, the, what, the one oh. thing that really came through to me about you is that you just are so sincere and excited about all of this Thank stuff. You. And, and, and so, so, so honest uh, as well. And so I, I, you, you actually blew Thank my mind you. about one thing. Uh, one of the things that you predicted, like the very, like, as soon as I got back, like the <laughs> next day. I love when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> that is so satisfying. Not going to lie. It always, you know, just hits right where it needs to. I never, ever get tired of that. And I've been, you know, doing this for a long time. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So you said something about um that i was going to have the opportunity to sort of like look after heirlooms for our family and i was like mm -hmm. what are you talking about mm -hmm. like i was like nah, i don't know about that you know and then as soon as we got uh as soon as i got back my dad was like hey we're gonna move all the stuff from the basement into the garage and we did it like the beverly hillbillies i mean like he oh, nice. had like a trailer <laughs> with a bunch of stuff <clears throat> anyway <clears throat> We moved all this stuff up there and there was a box full of like all these old photos and video uh, tapes and stuff. Oh, precious like treasure. Home movies. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, and I do happen to know somebody who can digitize all of that. So I'm going to take care of That's that. That's really important work. That's yeah. really important. 
and it was really like neat. the chronic part of the family. Yeah, it was so it was so it was so neat uh, that you you called that. Like I was like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> Thank it just you. It, it struck me. But um, but yeah, all the stuff that we talked about was amazing, and it, I do like the holistic, right? The holistic, choose your own, choose your own. Yeah. Uh, however, whatever feels right, whatever sits right. Choose with your members. own adventure. Yeah, there's so many methods out there and you know one thing that's been famously stated the menu's not the meal the map's not the territory all of what we have are models at our disposal yeah you know they're not the thing it's in as of itself they're just a you know reflection even words themselves yeah. are just labels that we're putting on things and it can be mm -hmm. almost even limiting right and like, you know, maybe at first we're just deciding what is not for us. And I, I could just tell by sincere inquiry into many different religions that the ready-made versions, while fine for other people and probably perfect for someone, it, there are so many things that were dissonant, you know, that I couldn't, I, that did not work for me. And so I'm like, I have to assemble my own belief system, which I think almost everyone probably does, but they just, they find something that they fit in with enough. If you're brave enough to not have to say that, it is hard to describe your, what you believe. And it's hard to find a meetup group but you can just make one. And that's what I do, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's important for people to do that. Take stock, take inventory, yeah. you know, ask yourself and, uh, and, and also nibble on certain things and see what you like about them. You might like certain yeah. aspects of something, you know, uh, or, or another thing, which makes me w wonder how you got into like the Vedic sort of uh, ideology. That's really interesting. Sure. Yeah, so um, like the way that I, like how I know if something is going to be something that I take with me, because it's not an exaggeration at all to say that I treat spirituality like, you know, a buffet, and I take what I want, and I fill my plate, you know, but um, the, uh, you know, the place where I came from, you know, it was like, okay, there's, you know, the polytheist thing, you know, is frowned upon for my, my fundamental Christian parents, but mm -hmm. something that I embraced later, I'm like, oh, that, that makes sense. It seems like there would be a lot of them. There sure are a lot of cultures with many gods, you know, maybe that's the thing. And um, I got to a relationship where I was with somebody who was very into like the Bhagavad Gita and stuff. And I borrowed books from them and it hit me right in the truth. Like those feelings that you get when you read something or hear something where you're like, that is true. Or like, there's something there that resonates with you deeply. And you, I don't even really know how to describe it other than like, ding, ding, that's true. You know, it hits the truth meter. And I feel like I have a really fair one because I have a Libra moon and I have a whole lot of you know, a lot of logic behind it, even though it seems like I operate on just emotions, you know, I like results. And I also keep things where I like, you know, will keep track of it, of a ritual or a reading and which ones are working. What am I doing when it's working? I pay attention to that. You know, you refine your methods, you refine your beliefs and, you know, things will happen that totally change your mind in your life, you know, but you yeah. keep what you need to. Yeah, that's cool. It's really interesting that you are that, um, you know, organized about it. And I think that tells a lot, you know, that it does, yeah. you know, well, like that's, that's important because, you know, otherwise you might completely miss something that if you hadn't been keeping stock and taking notes about, you know, how things yeah. are going, what you're doing differently. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's all in one book either. It's in many, many notebooks scattered throughout my house, but at least I write it down because I need, I can find it later. Sure. <laughs> Sure. As long I, as your chaos is organized. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm a little bit uh <clears throat> I'm a little bit like that too. Slightly, slightly disheveled. I've got a most of my notebooks are like stacked in a drawer, but uh I do have a couple here and a couple there as well. But you, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know. You gotta get it right. Out. <laughs> we'll find yeah, it later. You know where to find it. <laughs> that's right. It'll it'll pop out, it'll fall off a shelf when you need it. I found that happen too many times that's yeah that's funny um yeah a lot of times i want to just jump out at me you know <laughs> mm -hmm. um but yeah um that's so cool so so you so you got into the vedic stuff and then let's talk a little bit about a uh, uh, witchery or being a witch sure. what exactly what what how would you define that yeah well like you know which like I, I first discovered i guess like everybody i think watched bewitched or any of those shows and like wanted to be like that. But when you start feeling like, you know, either I'm crazy or I feel like I can like sort of know when something is gonna happen or know someone's true intentions. And then even the Bible, you know, which we read all the time as you know, I was forced to go to church like four times a week, um, it was like all the time. So the Bible had some good nuggets like the Witch of Endor and, you know, things that, that were very supernatural were happening. So I'm like, this is, if, if it's even happening in the book that's supposedly the authority of everything, then I think it's happening. And 
those are always the best stories. So I identified with those, you know, maybe villains or side characters or whatever in those books. And I wanted to make supernatural things happen too. And even with my mom calling a preacher or whatever, um, you know, I wasn't possessed. I'm like, this is me. If, if I'm the demon, I'm sorry, but I feel very human, you know? Yeah. Well, that, I mean, you just basically quoted Ralph Waldo Emerson without even <laughs> knowing it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, I haven't read him since, uh, you know, it's been a long time since I read Emerson, though. Yeah, for most people, it has. The, the language is, you know, Incredibly, so yeah. old, uh, but like, mm -hmm. it's so good. I think we're often exposed to things that are really, really excellent, maybe earlier than we're ready for them in school. Yeah, you know? don't appreciate it's it. Like, here, here's Ralph Waldo Emerson in sixth grade. Here's 1984 mm -hmm. in seventh grade. And you're like, yeah. and you read it when you're 30 and you're like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But good no. things you know you can come back in all the different parts of your life and you understand it from different perspectives and get to have a new appreciation for it so that's nice it is nice and it's it's you have to be the person that you are you don't have a choice you have to be totally. your most authentic and i i think that's beautiful and you said that in such a a, a powerful way um and i love it i, I think that was great um Thank you. You're so, nice. <laughs> so but, but yeah like just to like go into detail so yeah. i i like uh supernatural things too i think it's really interesting uh and there's you know theories and quantum physics and uh there's of yeah. course christian uh uh rituals and other types of things but when we get into the world of like uh, magic uh you know is it yeah. spell casting what in, what in general mm -hmm. are some of the methods that we might explore yeah yeah i mean so like um the a lot of the people that are first encountering witchcraft maybe back in my day it was like silver raven wolf and all these sort of like wicca pagan people and that was what was more popularized i did like the way that people were you know writing their own spells and like using emotions in order to carry out your will in the in the unseen in order to bring yourself the result you want and i definitely resonated with that so ritual is very important to me and you know making your own is very personal not always required because you can always use there's some good stuff out there you know on the internet is so full of it's like a whole spell book it's amazing but um i like to make my own kind of rituals and support so i was um looking at my altar the altar the altar i have here is has bast on it as you might be able to see um there she is but she's um a goddess that i really enjoy and even though i'm not egyptian you know i feel like she can still vibe with me what you want to do is be a star that um in your own life and and have integrity and morals and at least follow those things for yourself i feel like that helps attract the goodwill of forces outside of myself you know like be someone that you'd be proud of to be in front of anybody you know and that helps i think attract good things too and good in influence you know like maybe you have a bigger audience yeah well yeah i, I mean absolutely that's the most important thing is integrity i think and yeah uh, you know allowing it's okay to be weird it's okay to be strange you know but if you're not hurting anybody you're always good to people they'll remember that and they'll kind of like everybody around me like even though i'm very you know out there um they're very it's like oh she's quirky or oh she's eccentric is the worst thing you know yeah and well, what's wrong with that that's great that's <laughs> that's charm. yeah i like that yeah it's very <laughs> different you know if people stop for you know two minutes then they'll it'll they'll be enchanted by it that's my opinion I, and i think i think it's you know i think that's true in your case i think you're incredibly charming and bubbly so thank you yeah you know i mean who wouldn't want to have a conversation with you and the, the weirder the better because then you will get a laugh and yeah. you know <laughs> but that's cool yeah, I think but that's when you're the weird person, it's so good to find other weird and wonderful people and it just makes you feel so warm like like meeting you has made me feel warm inside and you know <laughs> We have to be able to get along with a lot of different groups, too, because the thing is, even when you're kind of on your own path, you don't really want to be alone all the time. Some people do, but everybody I talk to is always like, I want to have a coven. I'm like, good luck finding 13, including you, people that can agree, because sometimes I disagree with myself. But, you know, participating in things with other groups can be great. Like, I've had a lot of good experiences with the Unitarian Universalists, you know, letting pagans use their buildings. And I read their um, literature while I was there, and I'm like, you guys are pretty all right, you know? So I think there's a lot of people that I can kind of vibe with and we can find more that we agree on than disagree on, you know? The other stuff is just details, unless you're funding. <laughs> no, exactly. No, that's great. Well, yeah, again, that was uh, something that I immediately noticed was like, your intention's pure. You're not trying to, you know, 
out there trying to harm people or do anything. No, uh, unless you make me mad. Just kidding, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm sure. I'm sure there's like, yeah, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of uh, powerful things that people could do that might not be super scrupulous. You know, yeah. <laughs> like coming coming would, in to I the spiritual. To be, to like, yourself and like would you feel good about that 30 years from now would you be able to defend yourself i always ask myself that you know like, yes yourself. Could I still do that? you know be responsible with your power that's that's really good that's a yeah that's i think that's really important to note i i uh i really like that too just having that good intention yeah. uh is yeah. it's amazing and and finding other people who you know you can vibe with it is, it's soul butter. I feel the same way inside, yeah. you know, it's like all melty, you know, and gooey and it's nice. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so thank totally. you. Like, yeah. Um, I follow a lot of people that are very different than me, but like we have so much in common, you know, that, or that I at least admire them for, you know, even if it's sort of a one way relationship, like I follow Aquarius Maximus and her mother Diamonds 8, um, a lot of different astrologers online, Umi Genevieve, Genevieve is another one. And like, even though we don't have the same kind of life experiences, I love and respect what they're doing. And I'm like, we are all here to, you know, like I need to empower them. And like, you know, I, I like to hype them up because it's like, this is awesome. You know, people doing the great work that may not be my area of gift, but I'm learning from them. It's just really cool. And just trying to support all the content creators that are educating me because we get this free, amazing spiritual education with the internet, you know, it's all out there. It really is. There's a lot of people <clears throat> making really, really good content. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Like yeah, doing it extremely. You're not doing it because you're getting rich off of it. Um, <laughs> everybody should support your portray, and hopefully, like I, I'm going to. I think it's really important to support people that are enriching your life. You know, and people that are, and you're doing that even with no expectation of it. You know, you're just giving people a way to support you. So, I think definitely putting that energy into the world and just giving for no reason, giving with your open heart that is so powerful, like magic mana that can build up for you. And I definitely take advantage of that. That is awesome. You know? That like, is awesome. The good pill, you know, superpower. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you have a lot, like I'm very lucky. So I, I want to give because mm -hmm. I want to be able to get rich, 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 so I can give a lot. And there's nothing wrong with wanting that. Absolutely. Long as you share. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just share, no, you know? that's Don't great. Don't be like smog, have, you know, sitting on your gold, you know? Yeah. It's okay to get it's okay to get rich off this, you know. Just don't preach the poverty mindset. That's why Joel Osteen pisses me off. <laughs> that makes sense. Don't tell me that, you know. Then you got a big mansion. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Dude. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree with you. There's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> I think that, you know, as far as like creating or manifesting or, or what however we're you know like uh use what vernacular we use i think it really has ordering off the menu ordering off the menu <laughs> it has to do with abundance it has to do with being full first it's not really possible to do that until you know so good for you that's right. a great place to be to where you can begin to actually really create you know and it takes a long time to get there you know mm -hmm. we work really hard to just get to the point where we can feel abundant you know feeling even just good in our bodies you know <laughs> like that can be a struggle for totally <clears throat> oh yeah i'm on that journey right now because like you know, there might be some things in the arcane I'm pretty good at, but I also need to master the mundane. And so I'm working on taking up less physical space in the world. And also like making sure that I don't use, I don't use words like, oh, I'm losing weight because I'm not losing it. I don't want to find it. I <laughs> am. <laughs> I am changing into my new healthier form. I am upgrading. I am evolving. And I am giving more away rather than taking and trying to, you know, have life in these giant chunks. You know, I'm going to use that energy and time for other things that are more important yeah i love that yeah and the idea that the world is always giving back whatever it is that you give to it you know like mm -hmm. the world is a, a mirror as uh as people like to say you know totally, yeah um so the more that you give the more it's gonna just give to you if you try to take away from it then obviously it's gonna take back it's like a mm -hmm. negative uh, attractive magnet that just pushes, yeah. away, you know, so mm -hmm. it's interesting. We, yeah, we mentioned briefly, uh, before we started recording about the law of attraction and how it was only mm -hmm. like half the truth, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, I think that's, uh, you know, uh, kind of funny because it is also true, you know, that there is a, 
uh, repulsion as well, just yes. as much. There's their energies flowing both mm-hmm. ways. It's not just one yeah. and the other. You know, there's positive and the negative or cathode, uh, mm-hmm. as it's called in some books. You know, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I understand that. I understand that very abstractly, but I, I definitely get the concept of okay. So I don't chase relationships, people, or anything that isn't for me because I'm going to know because it's always such hard work to make it happen. So that's like the act of repulsion is I, I avoid situations where it, it shouldn't be happening at all. You know, I don't pester people, double text them, you know, beg them to love me. I don't need to. Someone is going to love you. Someone's going to love everyone. Everybody's somebody's fantasy and there's plenty of everything for everyone in the world. When you know that you don't chase things so much and you're not insisting that you know the best plan for your life at all times. Also the, let's see, what else repulses me? Uh, there's so much like in, um, you know, bad, bad, bad relationships or like, if you're having a bad time somewhere, like if you're not volunteering or, you know, taking care of somebody, you can just leave. And I do that whenever I want, you know, <laughs> owning your time is really important. If I don't like a movie, even though I don't know the ending, I turn it off. You know, there's only so much me to go around and so much everyone to go around. And uh, like, we choose what we do with our day all day. I don't want to, I'm not obligated to these things, you know? So I try to follow that, but I, I need to learn more about transurfing and like the other side of the law of attraction and being able to, you know, truly avoid like the anxious thoughts or whatever that everyone has. I think we're all working on that. Yeah, we're all working on it. Everybody's a work in progress, but I think it has to do with uh, what I would call emotional transactions, you know, yeah. like and for it's everything's attaining balance. That's what nature is all about. So, you know, the more you desire something, the more you also doubt that it's possible for you. And so mm-hmm. like, I don't know how I, from what I understand in general about like spell casting and these types of things is that you do drum up all of this energy and potential and then you mm-hmm. cast it out into the universe and then you sort of have to let it go basically. Yeah. Uh, and then, I keep checking a watch, a watch pot never boils. Right, right, exactly. <clears throat> and it's basically the, the same idea in, as far as I can tell, in basically any of the, like Neville Goddard or uh, the Transurfing or, uh, yeah. you know, some of the older. They all say the same thing. Yeah, they're all saying the same. I love the idea that you do your own spe- like work, your own ritual. I think that's so yeah. cool. Because I think the power is really in how you... Uh, value the ritual more than it is the actual ritual itself you know yeah it could just because all these great thinkers have already like laid out so much of the important stuff for me like you know leaving it be like you said when you do a spell or something you believe it's going to happen you ask like you already got it you know that's what they're all saying yep and they're all yeah exactly so you can literally spin it and customize it your own way which i think is really cool of you to do Thank you. It's easy to work up emotional energy when you're a cancer, as I'm sure you know, yeah. but that really, really helped. Everything that I've been most successful in doing was because I had a lot of, you know, a lot of feelings behind it. And you can cry, you can laugh, you can scream. It's also very cathartic. You know, it's like therapy, but doesn't, you know, replace real therapy, obviously, but it definitely is a form. And um, like you were saying about, oh, I just lost my, um, I think like with a ritual when I'm when I'm doing it for somebody else sometimes I can work up even more energy like if I'm mad on their behalf or something or really want something for somebody but I'm still experimenting experimenting with all the methods that I've been using to try and represent someone in a spell um, and you know, to get the results for them because sometimes I'll do it and it'll happen the good thing will happen to me I'm like no that wasn't for me <laughs> I'm like no the- like my friend needed a job and I'm like, okay, doing spells for his job, 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 job. And then I get an amazing offer from a recruiter and then I get a $10,000 raise. <laughs> and I'm like, I just need this to go to Antoine, please. He's my, my, my shaman friend. He's amazing. Antoine on it. Um, but like he's doing good now. He's doing, he's doing uh, mortgage. He's really successful, but man, I want that for him sooner. And I feel bad because I did something that, you know, I feel like doc in back to the future or something like, Oh, what happened? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny no that's you walk great. out of an exploded lab like whoops my bad <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> yeah sorry bro <laughs> i know right? but, but you gotta learn somehow like, you, know? gotta <laughs> <laughs> you gotta learn somehow and if, it, if you wind up yeah. accidentally blessing yourself i guess it's, there, there are worse fates you know <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at least it didn't take anything from them, but my goodness, you know, right. sure is, I'm like, I missed. 
<laughs> no, that's fantastic. And yeah, so, you know, I guess uh, that's interesting to think about, you know, if people were to put like some curses out there, you know, <laughs> like they just accidentally yeah. put those back. Oh, no. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, I think that's really, really interesting. There's so much to all of this. And um, oh, sure. And like chanting, you know, with chanting, there's not a lot of emotion if you don't even know what it's saying. But eventually, you kind of get to this emotional place. Like when I do like a Jupiter beige or something right now, because the Jupiter energy or, um, you know, something to help a friend, like a Saraswati mantra. I may not know what it means, even though I look it up, it still isn't my, you know, I don't speak Sanskrit or no Sanskrit very well. But eventually you get to the sort of point where it's resonating out of you and the speakers in here, you know, your uh, lungs are just like making you vibrate to all those sounds. It's like you really kind of feel it in a primal sort of way. And I think those kind of emotions, those sort of root chakra emotions are really important too and how powerful, you know, with yeah. the wanting because that want feel comes from your root. Huh interesting yeah i think yeah. sanskrit and and more ancient languages too might have a little bit more power possibly you know mm -hmm. uh, than english does sure but you can absolutely just say over and over what you want you know if this is not an anxious or upset way when you just sort of repeat over and over what's happening to you like it's present tense you know like everyone's subscribing to my patreon everyone loves my patreon they're all subscribing to my patreon they love owen they love it they, they love bootsy they're giving him money you know oh, yeah. you can say the things to yourself too even though it sounds crazy and i recommend doing it in a low voice that can work too you know you don't need to use an ancient language but it has to be something that you can say over and over and over and be fixated on it not an anxious or attached or you know desperate way because you never want to have desperation in your heart uh, when you're trying to manifest that seems uh save that for emergencies yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that seems it's like not just really like another month where you can't pay the light bill you know yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah well yeah i think i think desperation is uh is like pushing energy it's it's again like that that's you putting that pushing energy out there it's like you're talking about mm -hmm. like if something comes to you easily or if something's harder to attain there's like there's some sort of something that's keeping it from happening and you're just kind of basically checking off that um and i think that yeah the, the, that, that that's also you know uh an example of of that type of of energy the that wanting needy sort of mm -hmm. place is 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 a like a sucking you know from other people mm -hmm. um and i've been there you know <laughs> like in times in my life where i've just been like i want this so bad and this like desperation I want it. hail mary yeah. you know feeling that you that you have and then I don't know. I, I guess I'm coming to the realization that it's kind of impossible to know what you really want until you know who you really are. So, totally. you, know, you know, like it's, it's hard to have patience and then allow yourself to, for that to unfold and, you know, self uh, actualize or whatever. But if you do that, I think you have a much better chance at being fulfilled long-term than just like getting one yeah. thing and being happy about it for 10 seconds yeah. and then being depressed <laughs> yeah fact. you know vision, vision it from all the dimensions you know like you it's not just like am i i'm gonna be successful it's i'm gonna be successful happy i have money flowing in you know and that's what subliminals are really good for too is kind of help you create that you know that, that form of what you want and your dreams and you're using subliminals to access your subconscious mind too do you like to use subliminals or anything while you sleep uh yeah from time to time i do i really like um i love robert uh, monroe's uh, material he was uh like i guess he worked for the cia and in, in their like training mm -hmm. of all that weird like stuff. oh yeah he's got a huge youtube following for sure yeah yeah and he, yeah. I've, I've got his book i just started his first book uh, about astral projection i guess um i guess is what it's about, and dreaming um it's mm -hmm. really really interesting so yeah. far but i'm i'm super early into it uh but he's he's having these mm -hmm. uh these uh just experiences that he's he's talking about but on those uh on 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 his audios the sub subliminals are really really cool um i love the way that yeah. they're they're uh sort of curated and uh I, yeah and i've used a lot of like the binaural beats as well oh yeah mm -hmm. i like frequencies that yeah all that kind of stuff it's, it's really nice and it's sort of like a if you think about it, if you're going to, you know, some high end spa place that Gwyneth Paltrow was talking about in her latest book, something like that, you'd pay like a lot of money if you're a celebrity getting these kind of treatments, we can get ourselves for free on YouTube, or for free on, you know, the internet radio, or there's people giving you these things for free. And we should all be using 
whatever we need to be our happiest selves, you know, because it's there for us. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think that there are many, many tools out there. And like we were talking about earlier, it's like, pick your, pick what works for you. Pick what the truth yeah. is. You said it hit you in the truth. And yeah. you know, for me, it was that way when I read uh, reality transurfing or Emerson self-reliance mm-hmm. or the Kabbalion or like, uh, mm-hmm. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, like that book, you know, all oh, of the- Oh, I was just looking at it for that. Yeah, oh, it's so good. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Okay, I'll tell you. Yeah. It's really, yeah, really interesting because he, he interviews the devil and the devil's like, I'm not, you mm-hmm. know, some horny tailed dude. I'm, you know, the negative half of the atom. And it's like, you know, that's, uh, that's a bombshell right okay. there. And then he talks about basically the law of hypnotic rhythm, how- basically people are kept under a spell like a pattern happens yeah. more and 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 that's why that's- you know the planets rotate the way that they do and that's why people mm-hmm. who aren't actively taking charge of their minds uh just yeah. basically get lulled into a sleep because that pattern yeah you're doing continues. a daily orbit exactly mm-hmm. and so the majority of thoughts that we have i guess are completely unoriginal we're having a lot of the same thoughts over and over and over again just like building those habits unconsciously yeah. just by not yeah. consciously building a habit mm-hmm. yeah and if you think like it's temporary you always do when you're in that where you're kind of in the bad way of getting into the groove and you're just getting into a rut it mm-hmm. feels like okay i can stop this anytime or i'm, I'm going to change this sometime but the, you're Every day that you do that, you know, I've been there so many times, you know, where I'm like, I need to pull myself out of this and actually take a lot of action and tell myself that, yes, I can have things that I've always wanted. Like one thing I I think I waited 37 years to cast a spell on myself to lose weight, which I've struggled with my whole life is my weight. But I finally was like, why the heck not? I think maybe Stephen King's thinner like scared me from it for a long time or something, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, no, I don't want to just like, because I love being alive. I have an awesome life. And you know, people are really nice to me anyways. I have no troubles, like, other than people are, like, notice your weight and maybe say something unkind, you know? But people love you anyways. And um, I, but now that I really want it, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to cast a spell. I used a spell candle from Esoterica Boutique in New Orleans, and I really put a lot of love into it. And I also asked my ancestors for help, too, because I wanted to have a base of people that care about me and don't want me to just, you know, vanish into thin air or have some sort of emaciated look at all. So like, I don't know, I just think like when you're in there, you know, sometimes you can't necessarily pull yourself out, but you can always ask for help. You know, ancestors are there for you. Uh, so, you know, I think there's spiritual resources you can access. And then also the goodwill and love of other people, you know, it's really good to accumulate that. You know, people are going to come into your life when you need them, when you're ready to hear what they have to say. And so that's why I feel like it's kind of fortuitous that I met you and you're teaching me all about manifesting. You know, people need to level up. There's going to be someone that shows up in your life to help you level up. You know, the universe is listening. You really want wisdom, it's going to show up. Well, yeah, I, I feel the same way. I mean, you've, uh, you were dropping some, some bars on this podcast. So far. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, really appreciate it. Um, no, it's, it, I feel the same way. Because there's, so, like, there's so many different uh, ways to look at things and different tools uh, to use and implement. Um, but really, it's about, you know, being proactive, I think, you know, ultimately. Uh, because, mm-hmm. again, back to that sort of sucking energy, there's this, like, dominant sort of sucking yeah. energy that we all can kind of, like, get hypnotized by. You know, that's just being, totally. that's not taking action. It's not, you know, taking that mm-hmm. first step. And it's, we, we subconsciously establish patterns and habits. It's like you said, oh, I can stop this sure. rut. I can get out of this rut at any time. No big deal. I've been there yeah. so many times myself. I know it mm-hmm. so well. It's such an easy lie that yeah. we tell ourselves. But really, mm-hmm. all it takes is just a little bit of uh, being proactive for, you know, uh, it's like, 20 or 30 it days you know? and then before you know yeah it. like an act, act of kindness or austerity is really good to help you blast out it. whenever i've had something where i was down in the dumps you know got fired whatever i find a way to do something for somebody else you know you don't have to always go to people serving people and serve a meal or whatever sometimes i just blast out some money somewhere you know send it to a charity because I don't go to church, you know, I don't have a collection plate, but the collection plate is everywhere. When I walk around and there's people in need or I have to choose what I'm going to give my finite resources to. And when I want to flex on the universe, like, okay, yeah, I say I want money in the spell, you know, but I don't have the bad one. I don't have the gross, ugly one. I can go send some random person some money now in total faith that like, 
you know, everything is fine for me. And I, I know what I can spare. I'm not going to be like hoarding it, you know, like the four of pentacles. I'm not that way, you know? So the universe knows that it can bless me all at once and I'm not going to turn into a dick, you know? I'm going to give. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that you're people like it. Right. Steph Bates exist or whatever, but like for me, this is what's working. And for like a normal person, I think you can, it's, it's totally doable because you choose the amount, you choose how you do it, you know, but just make sure it's like a, something that calls you to give, you know? Absolutely. And I think you're proving it too. And also, you know, this is, it's biblical. I don't know. I grew up in the church, so uh, same, you know, same. Be faithful in the little you're, you'll be faithful in, in with, with more. So establishing yeah. that pattern early being generous mm -hmm. before you have it proves that you'll be generous yeah. when you do get it. You know, um, it is, totally. we definitely need to be full to be overflowing, but at the same time, if, mm -hmm you know, as just going ahead and acting as if, you know, and, yeah. and, and giving that's, that's really cool. totally the Bible. Like there's a lot of important things that we learned in our church, you know, upbringings. I think there's a lot of good there. The Bible is a spell book. Of course. I know lots of witches who are out there with the Psalms, you know, and it's, you know, it's a connective thing too. You also probably need a Bible for your ancestor altar, but that idea that giving is important and also that, you know, God or the divine sees what you're giving, you know, as how it comes from your heart. So the widow with like the half a penny or whatever, she was way more fly than the guy that had all the money and was giving, you know, a paltry amount compared to what he had. The, like the planets, the universe, whatever, they see what's in your heart. And when you're just giving without any expectation and without any, um, any hesitation of, of, or of greed in your heart, then it's like a beautiful thing. And that energy comes back to bless you like the sunshine. It's wonderful. Oh, that's awesome. It's beautiful mm -hmm. to hear. Yeah. And I, I love that too. Like releasing it, you know, uh, there's something just special about that anyway. It's like when you do mm -hmm. give something away, you know, not, not, not for any reason other than you just wanted to give it away. It feels so yeah. good to just like get rid sure of that. Does. It's almost like you have like all so that. Abundant. Yeah. Like, I don't need to go to Louis Vuitton or anything. I don't care about designer stuff. My purse is like, you know, 50 bucks. But what makes me feel rich is when I can make a difference for somebody, you know, with an amount that isn't really that big of a deal to me. It's like, wow, I am rich. This is amazing, you know? Gas and, um, like, up. Yeah. Like you're saying about energy, you know, we want to be a conductor. So we also need, like, energy can't come to us and just be absorbed. Like, money is energy. So like when you're a superconductor, money is like always flying out, but in good ways and it all comes back to you. Like I say, when I um, will exchange energy or spend money, I'm like, everything I spend comes back to me times 10 and just little things like that um, really puts me in the attitude to receive in abundance and, and it, it seems to work out, you know? It seems like you're giving or spending with a good intent too. You're not just mindlessly, yeah. you know, giving it away. It is that conscious intention of saying, yeah, you know, like I'm... 100% my attention, which is all I am, is like yeah. here in this moment. And I'm giving it with this type of, you know, uh, yeah. emotion, this type of uh, intention. And that I think, sure. uh, I think it does influence the way that yeah. that whole thing goes down and the energy sort of mm -hmm. accrual in the energy bank or whatever. Yeah. How, like, and giving the recipient the most dignity possible too. never giving with pity. And I like to do anonymous you know, donations and stuff. Cause really you don't want to hype up your, what you're doing at all. Like I move in secret. Like I think even the Bible does say that too. So I guess there's a lot that we held on to. Maybe our parents will feel better at Thanksgiving this year, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I well, wish yeah. we would talk more about what we agreed on at the table. You know, families are breaking up about one, two things, you know, that aren't, you know, they're not, I don't know why people, people only focus on what they disagree on. Yeah. And th that's, I think that's a big problem right now, especially, <laughs> you know, is that people get just, it's really easy to get distracted on, um, you know, just points of contention where we disagree. Um, it's way more important to look at each other with the eyes of love, you know, like my sister and I, like, right. I, I saw her at a, at a wedding and I got stuck at my, at my sister, other sister's wedding. I got stung by a caterpillar, you know, earlier in the day, we oh were my God. Like, you know, salty with each other. You get stung by a caterpillar, which I don't think anybody can say. Like, <laughs> I don't think anybody has ever, that's ever happened to anybody else. And then like my- neck, I didn't know where they were, do they have teeth? I guess they eat leaves, yeah. They just wow. like, they like go over you and just drop their little quills <laughs> in you. And then you break out ah! like a psycho at your sister's wedding. That's how it works. Oh no. 
Oh. But she looked at it and she was like, oh my God. I was like, oh, is it bad? <laughs> Which is not the question that you ask when someone says that. She was like, yeah, we got to take yeah. you to the hospital. And I was like, no, it's fine. I'm going to go to the hospital. Oh bathroom. my God. Look at it and like, I soaped it up or whatever. But, you know, it, she was like, yeah. I care about you, you know, and it was very clear that she did. And, you know, we, we needed to kind of open that up because, you know, it's really easy to disagree about things. But what is most important is, you know, that is my, that's, that, you know, that's another human being first and foremost, but like even mm -hmm. more so for me, it's my sister. And one of the yeah. things that she told me, which was so cute and uh, I didn't even think about it, but she was like, it's, it's, I think she said something like it's intimidating you, or you can be intimidating. Like, I don't want to disagree with you because I look up oh, to you or something. Yeah, I wouldn't want to argue with you. Oh, dude. I was <laughs> like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Like, I, you know, I take this for granted I, because, you know, I don't think about it like that. I don't think about it. Right. My, my little sister, right? She looks up to, at me. <laughs> of course, I didn't, I don't think about that. And, uh, but it was so sweet. And I was like, you know, of it's course we had- intense, but I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. No, it was good because it showed us both that, we value each other more than any of the crap we can argue about, basically. Yeah. All that stuff is ridiculous, ultimately, like other than us right. just coming together um, as, as people, as human beings. And, you know, of course, I think that goes beyond our, even our family, but family is important, you know? <laughs> yeah. So what are some things you do to not be, you know, to not feel like you're coming off as intimidating? Because I know when you're like a really sincere seeker and also like really into subjects, you know, it can come off as intense because you have a lot of passion for it, you know, and people might not feel like they could, you know, have a debate with you ever, or maybe even, you know, they're maybe af afraid to disagree with you or, or think they don't have the capacity to talk with you about things like that. You know, maybe that you would know way more and they might not feel comfortable. But what are some things you do to help people feel like more comfortable coming to you with those kind of things and more I guess free around you yeah that's good it's definitely something I need to pay more attention to I think because like just the way that I look I guess could be intimidating to some people right like I look like a bouncer at a oh. Trump rally you know yeah. and no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but uh but no but like you know it's just you know things like that I, I recognize that on stage when I'm doing like comedy too so yeah um, asking people questions just being sincere usually I, I think I'm pretty approachable it's my you know to my little sister obviously I'm not going to be nearly as approachable uh, as Aww. it would be to other people. Um, sometimes I'll People are here on war too, you know. so cute. Dude. I know, like I'm, I'm, I feel, I'm getting the big feels right now. Maybe I'll put Aww. on some glasses yes, from time awesome. to time. I'll put on glasses. Maybe that makes me feel more approachable. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, awesome. What's really your just, necklace? Oh. oh, I don't think, oh, it's, oh, just, sorry. Uh, it's just the headphones. Oh, cool. Sorry, I was thinking they had like a spiritual necklace on or something. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Oh, <laughs> uh, it would be like, cool. If... Jewelry is shiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. No, uh, you, uh, yeah, ways to sort of uh, show people that uh, that I am approachable or, or to mm -hmm. not be intimidating. It's, it's really good. That's something that I need to explore and think about more, you know. Um, humor is definitely uh, a yeah, good Yeah, stand-up comedy tool. for sure. You know, trying You're to make putting yourself laugh. out there being vulnerable. Nobody's more vulnerable than a stand-up comic, you know? <laughs> so that's yeah. really cool you're doing that. Well, I haven't done it in a while because of obviously ah. the lockdown uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. I need to get back out there. Honestly, I, I think we're going to uh, be doing something in the next month or two. Uh, at least that's what I've been told. But it's kind of hard. I don't think there's like a lot of like open mics and stuff like that. So you've got to get... Can't you make your own? You're like the guy doing all the, you know... You, you have all the stuff. You could just put your own show on. That's I'm sure true. everybody tells you that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I could talk. Yeah, I could talk to Kelly. We he he would do house shows from time to time. So we should probably do something like that. That would be fun. Something because I'll tell you what, like comedians have really helped me get through all this. You know, like there's some local comedians that used to do a Monday night comedy here, and since I can't really go there usually, it's really nice to just check out their videos. You know, we all need that. That's a really important another service you're providing people. But yeah. I know probably having the audience there would be nice. It is nice. Well, well, what we did, uh, what we did was we did some podcasts, some like improvisational sort of radio show uh, type podcast, yeah. and those were really mm -hmm. fun. We did one that was uh, like a conspiracy call-in show, kind of like Coast to Coast AM. Uh, yeah. And, and then we did one that was like a dating show, and then we did one that was kind of nice. like a, a, a trivia game show kind of type of thing. They were all really mm -hmm. fun. We did those. We were doing those for a while, Kelly and I, and those those are all uh, available. But um, 
yeah it's it's just been difficult because it's you know there's not people in the audience not the audience to feed their energy you know i love when they like get somebody really going to the show can just totally turn into a different thing yeah (laughs) (laughs) but yeah like a lot of people are doing really cool sketches and videos and stuff like that i need to get back on and do some more of that kind of stuff um you know we've done a fair bit of that and there's a lot of like cool online community comedy community groups as well uh, that are worth checking out so there's plenty of uh people doing it it's just uh, as far as like the stand-up aspect it's just a little bit uh, i think if people want your individual brand and they they, you know they're gonna want you you know what you have to offer is different and special even though there's a million tarot card readers online i'm gonna throw my head in the ring and Elle's gonna help me with some videos this weekend and and hopefully beyond I've been practicing my pick a card because those are fun. I, I really enjoy those. Where cool. have you ever done those? I've seen them. I've seen a couple of people do them on like Instagram here and there, and <laughs> at at a party or two. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's so fun because like it adds all those elements of chance in there. Like which video is you know on which page for you. So how do you come across it? You know, it's totally a chance that they'll be at my video hopefully, and hopefully the reading will resonate with them. But I've been practicing and like protect, being my own pretend video viewer and it's been working so far like oh, the ratings that's have... so cool <laughs> yeah the ratings are through the roof <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah me. that's amazing <laughs> no that's amazing no i think you're I, no i had so much fun chatting with you and making those videos i'm so glad that Elle's going to be doing some more for you that's fantastic she's yeah. wonderful big shout out to what her an amazing for, gift. yeah for bringing yeah. us together Nouvelle and, designs hmm? yep nouvelle designs uh dot com uh photography yeah, your head videography mm-hmm. uh and i imagine she's going to be doing all kinds of really cool artistic projects i know she uh had mentioned mm-hmm. to me that she wants to do you know some some other kind of stuff so um so definitely check well, she's that good out. at everything i still have a i have a mixed cd she made for me like 10 years ago where she did the art on the front and it's still one of my favorites you know she's so just anything she puts her hand to is beautiful she's got that eye I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And she definitely has a, a big heart too for helping people. Yeah. Um, and that's what she wants to do. We talked about putting together like a little bit of a personal inventory and I got a couple of other I things. A lot. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be really good, really, really helpful tool. Um, and I've, I've got to get on that. I've got, a, I've got quite a few things to, to take care of, but uh, this should be something that we are able to put together hopefully in the next week or two. So, you know, the more, Great. the more tools that we can offer, um, whatever, you know, whatever hits you in the truth, I think people, that's what they need to explore and, and try, yeah. and try everything. Who cares? What's the worst sure. that could happen? It's not for you. Uh, yeah. it's fine. But I do think that like we can integrate all of these tools, you know, personality test, uh, the Enneagram. I love them. I've got a podcast mm-hmm. that I'm talking to my friend Scotty about the Enneagram and some other things. And I'm going to yeah. talk to a numerologist coming up soon. I'm super excited. I love numerology. It's so oh, gosh. cool. So interesting. The more tools we can have to understand each other and ourselves is the better, you know, and understanding yourself, you know, what you need, you know, what you can ask for and understanding other people. It's like, how do you love them? How should I give them, you know, how should I give them feedback? Everything. So it really helps. I would more companies would do that you know beyond the do something for a week and forget about it i think it really is cool to have those kind of resources available and you know what you're doing for people is excellent making it making kind of a hub for them to learn yeah i'm I'm excited to be able to share yeah i just i just want to see people you know uh do start their own work and figure their own stuff out and give their gift you know like if that's that's what it's all about you know like the great work and all yeah um, whatever I mean, we read all these books we spent all this money learning this stuff and if we share it we learn it even better you know like there's been people that teach me so much about subjects i find you know because i got all the books my ex-boyfriend used to call it like personal hogwarts i have all my, <laughs> my house full of books but if i don't ever talk about it with anybody i'm not going to remember it so it really helps us too yeah i think the, well, the teaching is is i think how you really do learn they uh, you know like that's implementation putting yourself out there you, you might not be great at it the first time or two or three but sure. over time you figure it out and you get your legs underneath yeah. you and so i mean you've got mm-hmm. 20 years of this stuff so it's a pretty good foundation i think you've got and uh based on my experience and the fun that we had the other day uh i yeah i would say that you've got some pretty amazing gifts and I appreciate uh, you sharing them with me. So 
No, thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, no, folks. I mean, I got spoiled on camera. You know, I got, I got, <laughs> I got nothing to complain about for like, you know, two hours <laughs> straight. And so those videos will be coming That's out uh, pretty soon. And, and I'm really excited and I'll have links for, for Katie, how to find you, uh, how people can get in touch with you and what services uh, exactly do you offer? What, let's go through that list. Sure. Okay. So like people come to me for tarot card readings. I usually do in person, but what I understand with people, everything I've been doing a lot of video readings, you know, readings over video and um, phone, whatever, just as long as the person is willing to kind of at least give me some direction on which one to pick. Cause I want the person to have that um, choice. And then I also do, I do some runes, not that much. I'm a palm reader. I will do all these things at parties or events when those happen again. And then I help people with spells. I don't necessarily do the spells for them because I have to actually care about the issue. And honestly, I'm, I'm not going to lie to people and be like, oh yeah, I really want you to get back with that guy. He seems like a loser, you know? No, <laughs> there's only so much I can do there, but I really try to help people with spell consults as much as I can. And then anything Vedic, I do not charge for because it's I'm not Indian, but I'm just very, very interested in it and I've been studying it for so long. So I'll help people with their Vedic chart. I'll lend them a book, you know, there's, a lot of that, but mostly I just do fortune telling. Cool. That's amazing. How, how neat. <laughs> the occasional potion too, but there's a whole lot of competition in that arena. Oh, right on. Right on. Interesting. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Potions more like kind of for people to help with, um, you know, if they're sick or if they have a um, confidence problem, it's just, it's more placebo than anything, but placebo is a wonderful effect. I love it. <laughs> it works it really for me all the time. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. awesome. Sometimes it's just enough money that it cares. Yeah, that's right. So um, Katie Bowles uh, on, I guess, Facebook. I haven't really been on Facebook in a while. Oh, yeah. My Facebook name is Katie Decay because I don't want any HR departments to find me. I got a fancy job. Gotcha. So um, <laughs> K-A-Y-T-I-D-E-C-A-Y. Like I hope the HR ladies aren't listening. <laughs> if I if they are, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. I hope they want. I hope the HR ladies want to get spiritually growth too. It's for everybody, you know. It is. A um, uh, rising tide lifts all boats. I couldn't agree more. I love that. It's beautiful. Yeah, we all want to. Con con <laughs> it's my favorite quote. Add. Yeah, that's a great. That's great. Yeah. So Katie Decay for sure on Instagram as well, and uh, yeah, yeah, just trying to get you get you plugged up and Thank you. Up <laughs> I'm really bad at hyping myself. I am too. Like, right? I think most of us are. <laughs> but I want to try to, uh, yeah, but, but yeah, absolutely folks go check out Katie's YouTube channel as well, which as soon as, uh, as soon as you get that all up and running, I'll of course add that link Thank to you. this uh, yeah. description. Sure. There we go. And maybe and I, I'll, def, I'll definitely um, put some links up on my page about people that I've talked about just to kind of keep the groove going and um, definitely want to cross promote your channel and stuff too on my Instagram because it's, you know, it's really important that people connect with information that's going to help them. And I think you have so much going on, you know, that there's going to be something on your page that people can resonate with and benefit. Yeah, it's, it's really I've never cool. I've heard a lot of those things and I've been in for years oh that's so cool that's so i love hearing that yeah there's a lot of different models there's a lot of different maps out there and that's basically mm -hmm. i'm just a nerd i just like i think models and maps are neat and like your spells we we can create our own and we can also yeah. make them pliable and we can mm -hmm. adapt them and shrink them and and you know affect them at will and that's gonna you know that's going to change our experience. Sometimes it's just about uh, changing your relationship to the problem. And maybe it's not a problem yeah. as much anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And understanding that every, everything exists already in, in some reality, infinity is real. So in the dream space, everything mm -hmm. is stacked. It exists there. So it's not that you have to create this. It's just that you get to, you, you can choose it from the list of options, which are literally infinite. So just like opening up your mind and your attitude, I think toward that is a really good shift. And then there's some mm -hmm. other, you know, just yeah. some Jesus. other What's ways possible? to just brainwash yourself basically. You know? yeah. Right. Yeah, you don't have to let other people decide how you're going to live. And I think, you know, the, the great thing about this generation is that they finally exalted the geeks and the nerds of the world because, I mean, really, who's really doing a lot of service and that's them, you know? 
So yeah. I think I'm glad that there's a lot of love for that now. That's awesome. I love that too. Yeah. So our, our series is going to be coming out. Be sure to check that out. Um, yeah. Katie, thank you so much. You're amazing. I'm so excited to, to get the opportunity to meet with you and speak with you. You're expanding my horizons and I appreciate it tremendously. Thank, thank you so much you. for coming and chatting. Oh, thanks, Owen. It would be great if everybody could put in the comments, like, what would you ask a tarot card reader? Because I really want to hear about what, even people who never would come to see me, I really want, I'm interested in just scientifically to know, like, what someone would ask a fortune teller if okay. they could. And don't say lottery numbers, please. Okay. okay. That would be the one exception. <laughs> There's plenty of people on YouTube doing lottery numbers. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, folks, if you wouldn't mind, put that in the comments. What would you like to ask a, a tarot card reader? And, yeah. You know, we'll start. And what spell would you cast? I would like to see what's on people's minds. Sure. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder yeah. what spell people would cast. Like. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm just really interested in like, you know, because your audience seems so eclectic too, but I really thank you for the opportunity to, to do this and meet people I've never, you know, had a, another way to connect with in this universe and so far. And really, really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your light with me. It is my pleasure. I'm excited to be able to collaborate and talk about all these different uh, ideas. So the pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much, everybody. Go check out Katie, check out our new video, and we will see you next time.